everybody heard that. We got it. Yeah, we're live. <laughs> okay. Uh, good morning, everybody. Good evening, everybody. Um, welcome to this study group. Today we're um, working on the chart of Shelton, which is the daughter of Michael, and uh, we're lucky enough to have her here today. Um, hello, Shelton. Um, hello. So what probably the best thing to do is um, normally um, we'd just get somebody to talk about what they're looking for today and, um, you know, give us an idea of what we're looking at and where we're going to. So I, I don't know if, who wants to give us our brief this morning, if it's Michael and if it's Shelton, maybe between the two of you, between the two of you, you can tell us um, what we'll be doing today. My mom. Okay. Um, <laughs> so we are, uh, she's 25. Um, we are, so she's, you know, um, a young adult she's she's i guess you could say she's coming out of the fourth house into the fifth house into the sixth house you know she's coming around um and basically there's just been a lot of she's had a lot of obstacles um fifth house you know she came out of the fourth house and she went into the fifth house and like i said that's when adulthood really hit and she she just had a lot of she's had a lot of obstacles in that in that area and I just want to kind of see you know and a lot of the obstacles honestly have had to do with you know she was married at age 21 and then you know that there's she's got a daughter and then there was a divorce and, and so there's been a lot of I guess trauma that's happened just in the last five years pretty much um yes. so at this point what we're trying to figure out is where should we go from here um what should she concentrate on uh which 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 way should should she continue down the road of dentistry? Um, is is that the calling that she needs to kind of stick with, or or is there something else that you guys see that where we could kind of steer her in another direction? Um, you know, I guess we're just trying to. It's kind of one of those. Where do we go from here? Mm -hmm. Right. Right. One, one, one question I had before we start, um, you've got that sixth house stuff happening. You've got Pluto in the sixth house. You've got the sun in the sixth house. We, we, did you have illness when you were young or was uh, illness a factor in your life? Yes, I've had um, kidney problems my in, entire life. Okay, okay. She has one kidney. She was born with uh, one kidney. Right, right. Okay, mm -hmm. that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Um, what are your energy levels like? Because um, that, um, yeah, I, I don't know what the how that would manifest. Your vitality, uh, your energy. Meaning, like, how are, how am I overall during the day? Like, am I happy? Or yeah, well, not just um, mood wise. I guess you, from a physical point of view, the sun uh, represents your vitality. It's your life force, your energy, and things like that. So. Um, uh, when I look at that and, and from what you've just described, does that mean that your energy levels are low, that you run out of gas pretty quick? Um, I absolutely do, but it's like I have a lot of gas when I am doing something. So yeah. I go full speed and then I'm like, whoo, you know, like that's it. That's all I've got. And then emotionally, mentally, physically, I just can't do anything. Sure, sure. Okay. Anybody else? Any other thoughts? Does anything jump out for anybody? Um, well, for me, the first thing I went to is uh, to, to look at the Pluto transit. And I see that it's been it's been difficult so far uh, for everything. But once she gets to a certain point where she will cross the stellium in the eighth house with all those planets, it's like... She'll be able to sail through. and She's getting a lot of experience being so young with working with transformations. That was the first thing that occurred to me. Okay. Accurate. Mm -hmm. The other thing I that do see a yacht. Sorry, go. I see a yacht, um, which is, you know, I have a yacht in mine as well, and I see that she does have a yacht. Uh, with Saturn at the apex and then the north node and is it Chiron so she's got a yacht that that spans over the 11th 
fourth and fifth house. I think that's what I see. So, you know, obviously there's been some sort of wound in the fifth house um, of children. And mm -hmm. the the Saturn up here in Aries, at, which is the top planet, um, kind of tells me that she's got to come. She's got to come to terms with that wound so that she can progress into what she needs to. She's got to get over that so that she can progress into the rest of her life. Pretty much, she's got to. She's got to heal. That trauma's got to be healed. Yes, yeah, and there's a really mutual reception. Yes. Sorry, mutual reception, did you say? I found a mutual reception between Saturn and Mars. Mm. Mars in Capricorn and Saturn in Aries. And and yes, in, in this yard, it's like saying, let's go straight to the yard because... Yard Your audio has just dropped out there, Antoinette. Uh -oh. I'm sorry. That's all right. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Um, I too saw the yard, you know, between the moon in Cancer mm -hmm. and Chiron, the, the water trine, and then the yard. So it's mm -hmm. all tied into past life. And what I did no notice right away that Venus is, is conjunct the North Node today. Okay. And and a, a lot of things are in Aquaria. I just, I'm all over the place, so I'm not sure what to say just yet. No, there's but a lot I going a on. Lot I think you're on the right track. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That Chiron's in Scorpio as well, and the rulers for that are Mars and Pluto, which are in really dominant positions on the chart. So when you look at um, Saturn up the top of that yard, like you say, ordinarily when you're looking at a yacht you wouldn't include an asteroid or something like that in there um you're generally looking at big planets but that chiron for me is always the exception especially if it's really really strongly aspected um and yours is is quite powerful um so we've got pluto in the sixth house uh which is linked to uh your kidney condition uh you've got mars up there in the eighth house which is transformational <laughs> that's a whole whole bundle of uh of worms mm -hmm. up there, whole can of worms. Um, and they're the rulers of that um Chiron. Uh well that that oh wait a second. Yeah, they're ruling that. So and that's connected up to that satin up the top. So uh, just bouncing off what Antoinette says, there's a lot of potentially karmic stuff happening there too. Um, especially if you look at it from an esoteric astrology point of view. Uh mm -hmm. that Mars up there in the eighth house, that's the esoteric ruler of um Scorpio. So, um, yeah. What happened when, mm -hmm. can I ask, when you were young, That uh, can, can, if we explored that Chiron, because uh, that Saturn up there in the, the 11th house quite often manifests as isolation. You know what I mean? It's you, you don't have a big group of friends. In fact, you know, may, there may be a fear of social <laughs> um, social um, outings and events and, uh, and socializing with people as well. Um, that's one way it can manifest. Um, is that linked to, it looks like something happened in your childhood, which, which, which just um, broadsided everything. That's what I'm seeing. Um, can you, is there anything on mm -hmm. that you able to say? Um, yes, definitely. Definitely a lot. Um, a lot has contributed and I don't know, Mama, you you know too. She it's just been it's been a lot. But yes. Definitely. I was has a single I was a single mother and her dad, there were a lot of uh we divorced early and he was he ended up taking the wrong road, if you know what I mean. And so there was just there was a little bit of um um I, I don't know how to say it but she didn't have a mom and a dad early i mean she did only for until she was two and then after that it we were split so that's where the saturn comes in the father right there and if you'll see it's uh in opposition or the it, saturn forms a square to the moon which is me the mama 
you know, we mm -hmm. were divorced early. Um, and so she basically, you know, it was a back and forth thing, just like it is these days when you have a divorce, you know, meeting, he, we had to meet here to drop her off or be here to drop her off. And then there were times when he wouldn't bring her back to me. And, you know, we were in court a lot. Um, and because it was just, it was a nightmare. His parents were very wealthy. And even though he wasn't a, a, a good father, you know, they tried to do whatever they could to, um, you know, win, if you will. But and they didn't, you know, in the end, he ended up out of the picture for a very long time. But that's where the trust issues come in. Okay. For the record, too, and I just want to put this out to further groups as well. Um, you're in charge of boundaries today. So if there's anywhere you don't want to go with this, um, just say so and we'll respect that. That won't be a problem. Um, and that's for any other future groups, too, when we're looking at people's charts. Um, so I just want to put that out there. Okay. Yeah. We were prepared for all of this. I told her sure. you can, it's very personal and she was, she's, she understands. So we really want to look at it and we really, we really do want to. Wanna I don't think you can out. really answer the question you put forward today without looking at that Chiron, without exploring that eighth house and the the links. And like Antoinette said, there's they they they're all hardwired to each other. So um yeah, I, I don't see a, a delicate way around this. But yeah, like I said, you're in charge of boundaries, so just let us okay. know. Where we go. Yeah. Um. So the seventh house, which is the house of partnerships, let's see, that's that's in um, it's in Virgo, correct? Is that Virgo? I'm sorry, Sagittarius. That's Capricorn. My apologies. She's got Sagittarius and then Capricorn. So her ex-husband, which is my daughter's grandfather, um, not grandfather, my daughter's father, he's a Capricorn. So I can, you know, and then she's got um, Mercury in that sign and it's retrograde. So that would suggest that, you know, communication can sometimes be blocked. And so, but then that, it, it, it goes in, it, it flows into the eighth house nicely, I see. <laughs> and Capricorn with Mars and Neptune. So we all know what Neptune means. And so there has been some Neptune, you know, in the early age, in, in her early, um, part of the reason why there was a divorce maybe was because of the Neptune influence, if you know what I mean. You're talking about addiction? A little Infidelity bit. and addiction. Okay. Right, okay. Well, they were both at 28 degrees. Yes, I see that too. <laughs> They're right on top of each other. You, you know, yeah. uh, um, and it's that you've got Mercury in the seventh house in Sagittarius, and then you've got this Capricorn Aquarius stuff happening up in the eighth house. The energies couldn't be more opposite. So um, do you know what I mean? That that uh, if you look at it from a persona point of view, that um, why you may have gone into the into marriage and the way the man of, the marriage worked out um, could have been for completely different reasons altogether. Um I won't ask you why you got you got married, but my guess is it, it's helping to work through that fifth house stuff, that that Chiron stuff, that growth, um, and maybe it, what you got in return instead was transformation. And if we are looking at Saturn as a as a dominant planet on this chart and that yod pattern, and it, then then that's that was what you signed up for, I guess, was for those changes, was for that transformation, was to be challenged at that level and to work through that stuff, I guess. Um, see, that Chiron's also in a grand trine as well uh, to your moon again too, which is also when you look at the um, quincunx that's going from Chiron up to Saturn, that moon is the, is the release point for that for that pattern you've got a square running up to Saturn as well so your relationship with your mother obviously is very powerful and all of that but that you've got a trine up there too that's pointing to old life stuff um that needs to be worked through and let go of um so and old old life stuff can mean a lot of things to depending on, on where you're at I mean it could mean working through childhood stuff if you're looking at it from a reincarnation point of view then you've come in with patterns from a past life that you're trying to let go of or that you need to let go of 
Um, so, and gosh, it's, it's it's been done in a fairly ruthless way in your chart. You know, you've come in with um, this kidney condition. You've come in with this challenging childhood. Uh, you've got all this eighth house stuff. So you're not going to muck around when it comes to um, to doing the work. Um, and I, I guess the reason I'm, I'm saying this, I'm sorry, I'm dominating the microphone, um, but the, you, we've come in under the... Um, the the question of where to go career wise after this, but your plate is so full right now of all this other stuff um, that we might be putting the horse a bit before the cart on that one. Uh, I think mm -hmm. whatever you're looking at um, is going to be linked to working through that stuff first. Your life's putting that as a priority for you right now. Uh, everything's right there. Um, so sometimes it sounds like you may have found yourself right now. You, you said you still want to work as a dental hygienist, but you're, 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 you're not doing it right now. And, and maybe you're right exactly where you need to be right at this moment from that point of view, um, so that you can give this to your attention. Cause I, I I'm desperate to not sound doom and gloom, but, I, and, and the reason I'm saying a lot of this is because I get really excited by this kind of stuff. I think I, I see all the opportunities here right now. That's, that's what I see um you know disguised as as struggle i guess you know, mm -hmm. like, you know, i feel like i'm digging a hole um but that's that's the truth no i know it. i promise i know i've been living it is a big hole it's sure, a struggle sure, sure. for sure <laughs> but there's, there's there's something good coming up well you know if you're accustomed to struggles there's something coming up because i checked the transits again pluto is at 27 um, on the 2nd of November and through most of December is going to be on top of Mars and Neptune. And that's going to activate Saturn in Pisces. And Saturn is going to be part of that healing trine. And it's going to be eventually conjunct the South Node, which is the past life um, Chiron pain. So it, it's something might might trigger that healing and then by the time she gets to her saturn return or maybe before that is she can take her power you know hmm, because yes. i've checked it, it's like it, it, it's it's something is coming up and it's gonna be for a while but maybe this meeting is like kind of letting you know that soon you will be able to take a deep dive in, emotionally into the past and, and heal that that Chiron because Chiron is also in Aries, activating Mars. So it will it will actually get Saturn on both sides. I think like something could happen that will might trigger uh, an emotional catharsis that will help you to relive something and then heal it and then move on. But I have a question for teacher Damien because if we're talking about life life path or life movement what's more important the north node or a yard i think um the north node's where you're going and that yard will tell you in this lifetime how you're going to get there what the work is uh -huh. where the journey is um so uh, I, I for me on the chart the north node's always quite out of you know what they say that that saying that you know your goals or your dreams should always be outside the extent of your reach i think that's what the north node is to me um so it should be like a star that's always leading you in the direction that you want to go you know what even your north node's retrograde so uh even that's put off at the moment <laughs> you know what i'm saying so um <laughs> look at that. something i just want to add that? on to what antoinette said when you when you look at chiron Chiron's the expectation of pain as well. It's not always pain. It's always, it can be the expectation of pain. You know, when you've had wounding in the past and you you keep touching an old wound to see if it still hurts. Maybe what Antoinette's talking about right now is you're going to get this opportunity right now where life's going to put you in a position where you get to touch that wound again to see where, where the hurting lies, uh, to see if it still hurts. Um, God, it's like that Johnny Cash song, isn't it? I hurt myself today to see if I still feel... Um, so um but maybe that's what's coming up you know you, you're gonna get come back you you're gonna find yourself going back into elements of what you're feeling and one of the best things about Saturn going into um pisces is man it softens it right up i remember when my um um 
progress sat and went into um, Pluto, my energy changed. It changed big time. Um, so mm -hmm. it, sometimes that's in itself is just an insight. You know what I mean? The, the perspective that you need. So when you go back and 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 touch on that old pain, maybe you're going to feel it doesn't hurt as much as it used to. And you, you, you feel the the new tissue, you know, the, the new growth that's surrounding it. Um, and that's could be what is coming up. That's what it sounds like to me. Um, so, mm -hmm. Do you know what? When it's transiting and progressing stuff, it's going to move on from there. But what you feel in that moment, you're you're going to take with you as it keeps moving. You know. Mm -hmm. How are we doing so far? This is. <laughs> so it sounds kind of like she needs to deal with her trauma, her Chiron wound, um, so that she can uh, progress. To even to even get to her Saturn return, it seems to me like she needs to deal with the Chiron wound. Is that what you see? You know what? I think it's in terms of dealing with trauma. I, I'm not going to call it trauma. I think it's a it's from a, a a karmic point of view. It's it's all growth and it's accelerated growth. Uh, and it's it's I, I look at. I, I believe in reincarnation. I'm a reincarnationist, if you will. And we, from that point of view, we choose our experiences. And, and you've chosen the roller coaster ride this time. Um, it's <laughs> going to follow a track. It's going to go in the direction that it's going to go. And you know what that direction is, but it's going to go up and down at breakneck speed while it's happening. Um, mm -hmm. you, you've had stuff that's happened real quick. Uh, you've had physical setbacks which slow you down so in, in a past lifetime you probably had a lot of vitality when you when I look at it that it's in Sagittarius you probably did what you wanted when you wanted how you wanted you didn't care about what other people thought about it so that's gone that's gone for this lifetime um you've got Chiron down there in the fifth house so you've been broadsided at a young age uh and something's put you right on the track um that you chose to be on so and that, that's why I don't use the word, I, I wouldn't use the word trauma. You've got this full eighth house full of stuff. You've rushed into a marriage, um, if I can use that word, um, mm -hmm. which from what I can see was you in many ways working out um, that fifth house stuff uh, and maybe that early divorce when you were young, which we, which we all do. We choose those experiences, especially around that age uh to help us make sense of the the early part of our lives and you know trauma traumatic i'm using the word there experiences that we've had in the present and things like that and it's turned out the way that it's turned out you've perhaps chosen a partner who's got the qualities that have almost guaranteed it won't work in some ways but that the not working is important for you. You've got this, this again, to you, the rulership of Pluto down in this sixth house. So it's just, if we're talking about wounding, you've got a wound there with, with your physical health and you've just put your finger right on it uh, in that relationship. Um, and you've got that Mars up there in the eighth house. So that was going to be transformational. Um, the reasons why he did what he did, uh, I, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I'm not going to question, but when, I look at the chart, it, if purely from a karmic point of view, if I was standing right back, as far back as I could and looking at this, then if it wasn't him, it could have been somebody else that you would have chosen the same experiences with just based on where you were at, at the time. Mm -hmm. so, so that puts a, a, a bow on, on top of that and means that you can let that go when you're ready to. That experience has resolved itself. Do you know what I'm saying? So That makes uh, sense. Mm -hmm. it, it does. And like Antoinette said, it's all pointing back to the Saturn, uh, which is in Aries right now. Uh, and that's that's a, an interesting place for it to be. Um, Saturn, in a lot of ways, represents fear. Uh, and maybe your early life experiences have made you reluctant to, to socialize, to engage with the bigger world. Uh, that's my own simple explanation of what that might be. But you've got this exciting... Um, transit coming up where that Saturn is, is going to move into um, Pisces and that's going to soften that energy right up. Um, a lot of what's happening on your chart is happening in really powerful signs, really strong, really dominant signs. And now suddenly you're going to have all this uh, this Piscean energy coming in and it's going to soften things up. Uh, and maybe that may just manifest as you just releasing your grip just a bit. 
you know, and that in itself could could have a really massive positive effect uh, on who you are and where you are. And maybe that's at the time where you're going to figure out exactly it is where you need to go and what you need to do. Because um, I can't see it on your chart without really doing a deep dive. Uh, and I can't see it on your chart without it being connected. Something happened. I can't hear him. I can't Same. hear him he's, either. He will. He's sorry. My internet dropped out just for a second. There, I'm going to find that chart. Okay. I don't know what's going on there. Anyway, I think I got to the end of what I had to say right then. Um, so um, that's just putting a bow on it for me. I think looking at what's happening on your chart. What are other people's thoughts? I feel like I'm really charging ahead of you. I'm really excited about this chart. I think there's a lot happening on there. I couldn't find my notes, but I remember when I sat down and started taking notes and looking at the chart, I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> that was, that's like the extent of it. I was like, oh my goodness, she's got a lot going on now. I see why she wants us to look at her chart. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, the ninth house. Do you see where she's got Jupiter in the ninth house? Um, what does that say to you? How social are you? Do you do you have groups of friends? Do you do you get out? I'm kind of um, an extrovert sometimes, and I'm also a big introvert in a homebody. Mm. It's hard to get me out, but once I'm out, I'm okay for a little while, and then I'm ready to go back home. So I don't that's, really. That's like a that. super introvert. To, that's what I hear. You know, uh, uh, high, a high functioning introvert, you can go out, you can socialize, and then you run out of gas, and it takes you three times longer to recharge again. Um, yes. Yes. The reason I ask is getting back to um, what um, Michael and said that Jupiter in the ninth house is a really lovely placement for Jupiter because that's where it belongs. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it normally rules that when you're talking about you're talking about travel, uh, you're talking about higher learning. You know, like university or um, you know, you're talking about religion or faith. You're talking about spirituality, philosophy. Um, bigger concepts that that connect you to the wider, bigger world around you, uh, and and I'm talking bigger than than friends, talking bigger than you, your family or or anything like that. The experiences you cannot find in yourself. You have to go out in the world and gather that knowledge and that experience. Um, and the things you cannot teach yourself, you need to be taught by other people who are living that way or or understand things that way, and and so on. If 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 I was looking at that in connection with everything else that's going on in your chart, then that is just probably the the logical next step, you know, is to go out and find experiences um, that aren't going to exhaust you. Um, they're they're going to build uh, on things that um, need to be built on. You know, um, if we assume that, like I was saying before, you, what what's happened in your marriage is resolved is resolved mm -hmm. at least the stage that it's at for what it needed to be there's always residual fallout that happens at, uh, after that and it will go on forever especially if there's kids involved um but the the main thrust of that experience has been resolved uh and you know so maybe maybe higher learnings where you you need to look and that can be anything that can be from spirituality that can be from um going to university even just going overseas if there's somewhere you'd like to go, experiences you'd like to have, you know, uh, that might mm -hmm. help right about. What do you think, Antoinette? Do you see um, about that Jupiter yeah. there in the ninth house? Yeah, actually, I I noticed that it was it was prominent, you know, because um, and it has to do, yeah, with finding yourself in in different cultures with different people and big groups of people, you know, because Jupiter is big and and, and uh, Aquarius is even bigger, you know? 
Mm-hmm. And um, and she is like going to, like taking time to maybe go on a trip to study something different, learn a different language. You get a bigger um, mindset for, you know, it's like it could be something that you eventually will explore. You know, like mm-hmm. your your destiny or whatever it is is outside of your native country. Could well be. Mm-hmm. Eventually, okay. yeah. Or even just leaving her hometown. Maybe yes. she, maybe that's an indicating she needs to do that. You know, maybe maybe where she is, she's not able to uh, express or expand or or even um realize what she's supposed to be doing in her life because of the trauma or the i don't want to say trauma because of all the baggage that she has there maybe that's an indication that jupiter you know the planet of expansion maybe she needs to look into leaving that area and 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 expanding her horizons yes definitely because that's where she's gonna find herself i think and not only herself she may find somebody who is more in tune yeah, somebody you know, that's, that's yeah, somebody that's worth spending her time with. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. Mm-hmm. So it's it's like part of part of what she's come to do is to learn to become a seeker, you know, and and then to find the truth about mm-hmm. about herself, about life. Mm-hmm. 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 Very, you know, and it's just outside <laughs> into the ninth house, Jupiter. So mm-hmm. he got away from the eighth. <laughs> just barely and so did uranus it looks like no uranus is in the eighth house so yes yeah, so jupiter got out of the eighth house just barely you're you're right into the ninth house <laughs> you know what i think maybe that experience is designed to chase you out of your house um <laughs> when you look at it from a, an esoteric point of view the moon rules the past life and your past life is in cancer um mm-hmm. When you look at the present incarnation, you look to the sun and yours is in Sagittarius. So that really reinforces what uh, Antoinette said about um, becoming a seeker, um, getting out of your comfort zone, getting out of that pattern of safety, because there's no bigger enemy to growth than safety. Um, so, um, but, you know, and it's interesting the way that it's happened because if you've got health considerations uh, when you do it. So you, you can't be reckless about your journey. Um, it's all a very carefully curated experience you've chosen. Um, Jupiter in the ninth house is the ruler of um, that um, sixth house stuff too. So maybe if you were looking at going to university or something like that, maybe studying medicine, something linked to medicine, definitely something linked to service um service mm-hmm. to other people rather than yourself that's the house of service um gosh uh it would do wonderful things for your soul i think um that eighth house stuff there you're talking about there maybe you will meet somebody nice but um gosh you you're all hands-on when it comes i think to eighth house experiences and um seventh house experiences so there's a lot of um the power in that house um and it's it's taken you this this far and and it sounds like you're you're really moving really really quickly through life um so you seem to have a sense of urgency about you don't know where it is you're going but you definitely got a sense of urgency about getting there um that's true yeah i, I can really relate to that in, in my own chart as well i i it, it feels like i'm running a foot race most of the time it's it's about getting to the end uh mm-hmm. and, and about not being in the moment so um you know, you know, I I don't know what it is that keeps pulling you towards the future, but um, it, there's a real sense of urgency about getting there. So, um, and that's in your chart too. Uh, unfortunately for you, you don't have the stamina to to keep it up at that pace. So, um, it's always going to be regulated. I have a question. Um, so with Jupiter, isn't Jupiter about like also being a teacher too? So wouldn't that make her someone who's good at like giving advice to others or even like maybe helping humanity in some way? Absolutely. You, your currency is, is experience. How old are you? 25. Did, did you say? Oh, yeah. You. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> You've you've accumulated so much experience. 
um so quickly sure why not you know this, this and that baton of itself is a is a fantastic currency for for service um there's going places that others haven't been and having experiences that i haven't had and and at the very least showing people that sure you can survive this you know um not only can you survive this you can move on so um mm -hmm. what 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 drives you at the end of the day are you one of these evidence evidence based people is that you see evidence of something in your life and that's what you need to know that something can be done or is it faith that drives you forward uh, are you a logical person what what how does your system work my main drive is my daughter, but at the same time, I'm self-driven because I'm not, you know, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep myself going. There, there's not an option to fail. So really it's self-motivation on top of, you know, being the best I could be for my daughter and be the best example I could be like my mom has been for me. So evidence-based, I think. I suppose. I don't know what that I means. Suppose. But... I suppose it may be evidence based. You like to see. Um, um, it's best to see how my, how, how do I want to say this? Um, to see results. Yes, evidence based. So it, it, is, I think that's... it is about seeing results. However, it's, it's, it's really about maintaining survival at this point in life. Just keep, just keep swimming kind of thing. Just trying to keep on going. Keep your head but, above water. <laughs> yes, but not drowned. That's kind of where I'm at with everything. What What about finding finding balance in home life? Like trying to strike a balance between professional and home life. Because the North North is in the area that has to do with, it's like it's time to relax. And, you know, if you could reach towards that, you know, because um, you're going to be going through a lot of transformations in this lifetime. It's, it's going to be a, a powerful lifetime for you. So you need to take breaks every now and then. Because. Mm -hmm. My living situation is a difficult thing, too, because I can't ever get anything anywhere stable. It seems, you know, it'll be going good. And then like my roommate yesterday decided to kick me out. Or not yesterday, but the other Friday for no reason. So I had to pull the 30-day eviction. You can't kick me out until 30 days. So it's just a whole mess. It's a whole mess. Everything's crazy. So my home life is not balanced right now. But there's a good thing that might happen soon, you know, because if if Pluto is sextile Mars and Mars rules rules the 11th house where Saturn is like a, like work, it might something might come up definitely you know saturn is closing into the mid heaven i think soon you should get some work okay how old is your daughter oh. i ask i always try to be positive you know she's four she's four okay we, we, could, could you tell us just a little about a bit about her just personality wise She's very ambitious. She knows what she wants. She's not bratty, but she's sassy. She's not disrespectful, but she's abrupt, um, blunt. You know what I mean? Mm. She's she's a little firecracker. She's a Gemini, or no, she was May twenty, so she's a Taurus. She's a Taurus sun, Sagittarius moon, and a Capricorn rising. Shelton is a Sagittarius, and the uh, my daughter's grandfather, my daughter's father, is a Capricorn. So, and then my son is a Taurus. Oh, good lord! So she's she's kind of got all of those in her little mix. Oh my god! Okay. Married a Sagittarius? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Exactly. If mm -hmm. okay, so if we we just looked at the life experiences that you've had right now the ones that have led you up right to the moment that you're in right now if we look at that jupiter up, up there in the ninth house as a teacher and as if if you would look at because you you're your daughter's sun um moon on her chart right now mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. what 
what as a teacher based on the experiences and the life experiences the things that have happened in your life right now what experiences do you think you've been brought into your daughter daughter's life to teach her what what qualities have you developed through your own experiences that have brought you as her teacher what mm -hmm. if, if she um was to learn from you what would she learn what so she's got a Oh, are Definitely you talking had to me? Are you talking about me? Yes. Go ahead, sweetie. Okay. So I gentle parent her a lot better where and she's more receptive to that because, you know, if her, her dad yells at her or uses that kind of discipline, then she doesn't listen. She's just going to shut you out. Um, so I feel like I can get down to her level and talk to her about things instead of being you know, the traditional discipline. And she's so much more receptive to that. And that's made our bond grow as well because she sees that I'm, you know, I'm trying to help her, I guess, and not just mad at her. So okay. I think she's noticed that for sure. But I'm, I'm, I'm inviting you to take a step back um, to look outside the dynamic with your ex-husband's um, to look outside the dynamic of what's happening in your life right now, right at this moment, because um, you say you're in survival mode, uh, but a lot's happened before you got from where you are now. That that's led you to where you are now. You've you've learned a lot of stuff. You've you've grown in a lot of ways, um, and then you've arrived at a point now where you're a parent, uh, and it's that's a powerful moment in your life because everything's happening all at once. You, you've, it doesn't sound like you've ever had a breather. Um, but you're right at this point right now where um, all of your experiences have led you to to this moment. So, and you you have learned things as you've gone. You've you've obviously learned strength, uh, even though you 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 do look tired and you do look like it's it's weighing down on you. There's no there's no doubt about that. But you've you've mm -hmm. learned strength and you've had experiences and there's different kinds of strength. There's there's not just the strength to be able to force other people to do what you want to, them to do. Um, there's, there's strength in being available for other people. There's strength in service. There's strength in not being reactive. You know, even simple things like um, tending to other people, whether they notice or not, things like that. And, th and that kind of strength, you know, this is a funny thing when you, when you're older um, and, you know, your life's more settled and things like that. You don't notice these experiences as you've had at a young age because they've just kind of, they were there under the threshold of your consciousness because you grew up surrounded by this energy. Uh, you probably know, if, if you're like me, you probably know and understand your mother now more than you ever did before. Uh, it was the same when with my father's relationship. My father left quite early um, and I... I could never reconcile that in my head, but when my own marriage didn't work out, suddenly I understood him so much better. Um, and that's when he became a teacher to me. Do you know what I'm saying? So, um, and this is what I'm saying. You're, you're not at that point yet. Uh, and you're in survival mode right now, but you've, you've picked up experiences and you've gathered strengths uh, and you've had more than your share of challenges and you're still here and you're still fighting. Um, so, and now you've got a daughter who's looking up to you. What do you think she's she's going to learn from you so far from what you've done and, and who you've been and who you are right now in this moment? This this gentle parent who's attentive to this child who's, you know, giving her her full attention uh, and doing everything for her right now. What is she? What do you think she might learn from you? Strength, perseverance, um. And to never give up, you know, believe in yourself and always be true to who you are. That's what I think. Right. Hundred so. percent believe what you're saying right now. You're saying with absolute conviction. So, um, that's you. Uh, you you're the moon on your daughter's chart. So, and again, too, um, you, we were looking at um, as Jasmine pointed out right up the top you in um the ninth house you can also be the teacher on your chart as well. Not only can you be seeking out teaching and growth and things like that, but you're teaching her all the time and she's learning from you. Um, and I can see that on your chart, you've got this um, powerful moon energy happening on your chart and that's your mother in the first house. So, who, so much of who you are 
And the way you do things right now in your life is, is so powerfully influenced by that relationship that the two of you have had. And it sounds like, even it sounds in some ways like you're a continuation of that experience. You know, you're the you're the sequel in some ways, and it's going to take you even further. Um, are, are you happy with where your mom, your mother's ended up in her life right now? Do you think she's in a good place? I do. It sound, you do, because it sounds like you're following a similar path. Yours is thornier. Uh, it sounds like you've got some some bigger obstacles. I'm, I'm assuming here, Michael, and you you might have no legs, from what I can tell from Zoom. Um, but um, <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> it sounds like you've got a continuation of that of that journey. Your 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 journeys are linked, uh, and you're so connected to each other. Your strength for each other. So, um, and you will be for your daughter. She maybe she's going to have tough experiences too. It doesn't sound like. Your family, the the women in your family, take the easy road. Um, so she may be the next generation of of a battle that the two of you have already started. Um, so, and and in that regard, I think Jasmine's absolutely right. You you're going to be a teacher. You you already are. It's already happening. Um, and it sounds like, at the very least, you the key words that you used were strength and perseverance. Uh, you know, a, a no quit energy. Um, and you know, it's as it's, it's tough as life gets, that, that that energy never gets exhausted. That's always important. That's always important. Um, and when you're right down to the bottom line, that's when you discover what you're all about. Um, and and yeah. people are watching while it's happening for you. Um, so they're seeing that. So I, I think Jasmine made an amazing point. And that, I think that may have something to do with what the next stage will be. Antoinette's put her finger on the fact you've got the softening of energy coming up soon that's going to um, start lifting up things. It may not turn into a job, but look, your 10th house has got uh, the south node in it. Um, I don't think the job's ever going to be the focus. It's going to be linked to what's happening in your life and who you are. You've got to, you've picked the journey. You're, you're on that journey, whether you like it or not. Uh, it's happening to you. It's gonna. It's happening to you right now, and it's gonna keep happening to you, but not in the same way. So we, we can see growth and progression in that. You've got softening energy coming up. You've got another generation uh, that's coming through right now. That's you know that who's already learning uh, for her journey based on the way that you're traveling on yours. Um, mm -hmm. It's all connected, you know. So you've got this big line of things happening behind you, uh, and you've got this path that's laid out right in front of you, and that's um in whatever it is you're, you're approaching at a breakneck speed you're not mucking around um mm -hmm. so, yeah so if you're feeling stuck right now i don't see any any signs of stuck on your chart you're always going to be moving it's always okay. going to be transitioning and changing it's in sagittarius so you know it won't really matter what other people are doing so much only you'll only have a handful of people who you'll have a connection to uh but they'll have you back uh, and that's that's worth its weight in gold but you'll always be traveling and you'll always be growing and moving forward um i think um jasmine's right i think teach uh experience is going to be your teacher and and you're going to teach experience i think that's got a, a lot to do with what's going on i think your sixth house i think your 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 health um, what you've been given that you've chosen in this lifetime to come in with um, it's going to play a big part in it I think it's it's it comes with its set of positives as much as it's, it's negatives at the very least it's breaks um, that'll force you to stop and think and evaluate um, so um, what did you say your daughter's son was a Gemini oh, no she's a Taurus okay she is her yes she's Taurus yep Okay, so Taurians can't survive in an environment where you're moving all the time. They just they can't do it. Um, so maybe that's the way you've curated your journey is to always be moving, always be growing, but to still have roots while you're doing it because you can only go so far before yeah. you run out of gas. Uh, so it all seems to be working quite nicely, just not manifesting uh, in a secure way in the present. But maybe that's why you've got the experiences that you've got. Um, otherwise, without those restraints, um, gosh, you, 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 you've got all this powerful eighth house stuff. You've got this uh, impelling fifth house Chiron stuff that's happening. Uh, you could be living in any number of ways right now, uh, recklessly. Um, so um, it sounds like that's not something you're allowed to do. How, how does that sound? I've... <laughs> I hope that sounded positive. To me, it sounds positive. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I think it's positive, right, Mama? Yes, I think that was spot on. She is she is living a little recklessly like now. I attribute that to her age. You know, Not she's too reckless, though. I didn't say too recklessly. I said a little recklessly, and I, I just attribute that to her age and her lack of experience and and being out there in the world and, and making the decisions based on how you know there's other people when you involve other people and you don't know the people that you're dealing with, then you know, you can have some obstacles that you weren't um that you weren't expecting i think she's she's come across a few people that she thought were were good people and then it turns out that they they weren't at all but you know the trusting part of her just kind of you know she's inexperienced she's young so this is young adulthood just trying to try to get there and and get there with the least amount of resistance and she's had a little bit of resistance. Now she hasn't made the best decisions, but I also attribute that to the fact that she's just a young adult and, you know, there's a lot of temptation out there. And you know, she hasn't had her first Saturn return yet. So that's when they really become adults at Saturn return. I know yep. you're exactly right. <laughs> That being said, though, look, there's only one real point of safety on her chart, and that's that moon in the first house, and that's you. Um, uh, she, look, she's she's come here to take her hands off the table. When I look at this chart, she's um, here for experience. That's and and with that satin at the top of her chart, that's not going to turn into dividends till later on in her life. Uh, she's not going to she's not going to get returns from it today. Um, no. So her her um currency is experience um and she's she's here to build it and she's not mucking around while she's doing it you've taken on some big experiences um and they they delivered you to the point that you're at right now so, and 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 that's fine because what your chart's saying is a hey, that's what you, the way you've chosen to live and and you're true to your terms uh, but B, it says that it's all it's all leading somewhere. And I think when we look at that, we're looking at Saturn and Jupiter. They're two planets that got completely different energy. They could not be more opposite to each other, yet they're prominent on your chart and they all and, and they play a major role in where you're going. Um that Jupiter, uh, if you're tapping into that, you you're always gonna be all right. You, you, some people here's the thing with Saturn, especially when you've got really, really powerful Saturn on your chart. Uh, I've got Saturn in the 12th house. Uh, it's the bucket. Uh, it's the handle of a bucket, which means that everything in my life goes through Saturn. Um, and since it's in the twelfth house, there's there's always lessons, but I never know what they are. Uh, I'm never told what the rules are. It always feels like there's rules in life. I only know what the rules are when I break them, because then things go wrong. Um, but the funny thing is, when when things seem to get really really bad, I always get just enough of what I need to get to the next stop. I, I don't even know where it comes from half the time. You know what? If you really want to push your luck, you can even depend on that. Sometimes it always seems to come out, come through somehow. It never comes through in a quantity big enough for me to really celebrate or to feel like I've got control of my life. It's still, in a lot of ways, it still feels like it's out of control, but I'll always get enough to get to where I'm going because where I'm going is karmic. It's a predestined place that I need to get to and it's going to take a long time to get there. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so mm -hmm. you've got uh, the satin up in Aries right at the top of your chart. So that's that's your lessons are going to be abrupt uh, and they're going to happen in real time. Uh, they're going to happen in places generally everybody's going to see it. Um, there's no hiding it. Um, and they can isolate you and they will isolate you. Um, but... You, your chart's too carefully constructed for it to look like the walls of chaos are really controlling what you're doing. Um, and even if people tried to tell you what to do, I don't think you could be told what to do. Um, so <laughs> they, they're your terms. Nice. You know, they're your terms. They're the terms that you've set for the way you want to live and you're living true to those terms right now. It's brought you to where you are right now. Um, and it sounds like mm -hmm. you're struggling and you're in survival mode, but you're you're living by your terms. Maybe that softening and satin energy means you're going to start letting more people in to your life, uh, and there'll be a change in the energy of the people that you choose. Um, so I think Antoinette um, has given you a real lifeline there. 
um, there's some 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 softer energy coming into your life and it's on its way. Um, but mm-hmm. it might be one of those satin care packages, you know, that um that come and they they'll carry you through. They'll there's a bit of medication in there, there's some toothpaste, there's a change of clothes. Um <laughs> And then the next leg will start of your journey. Um, so you, you need to brace yourself for that because you've chosen a tough one and you're living in a tough way. So, um, you know, when that respite comes, take full advantage of it uh, and rest uh, and be ready. You know, there's something, the good, I see that her moon is is the furthest away from everything. Like the moon is where she goes to rest. Mm-hmm. And it's by itself on its own in the first house. So it's like her emotions could be clear of whatever is going on. She's always going to be all right at home on the inside, you know, and mommy's going to be there. So mm-hmm. it, it, it's like she's not going to get emotionally entangled with what's going on. Like she can see for what it is. She has some objectivity with respect to those planets in the eighth house. Even though they're not easy. But, you know. The moon in Cancer is safe. I, I, I just get that feeling. Yes. I totally agree. With that. All right. Well, there's no hidden there's no hidden enemies in the twelfth house, so that's good. <laughs> 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 no, they're in the seventh house. Yeah, you know, I see that. The, the ruler, I noticed the ruler of the whole chart is right beside the sun, and it's in the seventh house. And I had a mm-hmm. question with that. Um, when when you're looking at who you are, and you're looking at your partner, and the sun is in the seventh, or it's in the same sign as the cusp of the seventh, mm-hmm. how can you distinguish between yourself and your partner? In in so far as reading for yourself, or that's a question I had. There's no partner right now. Is that weird? Like her, her. Uh, I think like, Antoinette's asking, "Where do you end, and where does the relationship begin?" Is that is that where you're going with that? I but see. isn't yes, that one when of you the... want to look at chat? But I can see right away that that is part of what it is. What's going on? You That's know, the annoying because... thing about astrology. It doesn't come with solutions, but it can really tell you what the problem is really quickly. <laughs> um, and, you know, the stupid thing is about astrology too, even though you can see it, what you see today is going to be completely different to what you see 5, 10, 20 years in the future when you look at that same placement again because your experiences would have changed and the way that you see things would have changed, you know. Um, so... Really, that I think that at the end of the day, that's not going to give you any answers. That's going to tell you with some really transformational stuff. That, that the, that's the word we use when we say that you've got some real shit coming up uh, in the future. <laughs> <laughs> so, transformational growth um, opportunities uh, will happen in the cusp of the sixth and the seventh house. Your um, it's it's yeah. Sorry, go. What were you going to say? Like I'm seeing now, that's where everything is. Because like you said, she said, I was quick to get married. Like I went, she came in and she went straight over to the seventh house. And then she married a Sagittarian. So it's like, the, there's some mirroring, mirroring, they call it. Like she, I need to, I can find I out who I am when I'm with someone else. She married a Capricorn, Antoinette. True to touch. Oh, she's a, a, she, about 8, she's a Sagittarius. <laughs> oh, okay, I wasn't sure. There so you go. It was like. Do you think, um, okay. just a personal question, you feel free to say no, but do you feel that your health condition is an impediment to a relationship? Do you think um, somebody who will look at your fact that you're missing a kidney, that you've got physical needs and, and um, vulnerabilities attached to that, do you see that as an impediment to you? being attractive as a partner to other people do you just see that as a problem or are you I don't. okay great great because the potential for that's there to feel that and hmm. it might have at, at a gross level that might have explained why you may have married so young um you might have chosen somebody who didn't feel that as an as an obstacle um mm-hmm. so but that's not the case 
So that's one way that might have manifested. And if that's not the case, then that's that's good. How have we done? I think we've we've covered a lot of stuff. Yeah. What are your Great thoughts? Have you, have you, has it been a positive experience for you, or do you feel like you've just been run over by a bus? No, I feel like it was pretty pretty dead on. Like. I'm not, you know, that was great. It's crazy. It was spot on. <laughs> Good. Do, do you feel there's so awesome. at least some glimpse into where you might be heading, though? Uh, it feels like a lot of the energy is talking about the past and the present, but do you feel there's at least some, other than this this wonderful Saturn transit coming up, um, with everything clarity, going I on, I feel I feel a little bit of relief because um, because knowing that there is something to at least look forward to, even though that it is going to be a difficult ride the whole time, you know, <laughs> still being able to you know do it and have some some breaks, not many, but you know, knowing that. I will learn from it and basically get stronger and then use my experiences to better my daughter's life. So. Which is what I've done. I've used all of my experience to help make your life better. Right. Does anybody else have any other thoughts? Anything they want to add that we might have missed or in, in, any summary anybody wants to offer? I'm feeling that you've had a rocky road here to start and that you've learned a lot of lessons at a young age that you're going to, all of that strength and all of that experience is just going to make you a great mom. And you're going to take all this and just have a great rest of your life because, well, because you. you hit so hard already. You're, you're ready. You, you, you can get through the knocks and the punches. You're, you, you've got this. Cool. Thank you. I really appreciate that. I think you're going to help a, a lot of people. Maybe at some point in time, public speaking about your experiences and how you got through your traumas, you know, it's because it's, yeah, because Jupiter in Aquarius, I look to Uranus who is also in Aquarius. And it's like getting through difficult spots and still, you know, having resilience. I think I, I would just say resilience, you know. I have that look. I have that tattooed right here, resilience. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, that resilience. I think that was her first tattoo, actually. She didn't even tell me about it. She just, um, she went and got it. And she's like, look. And I was like, awesome. So remember? Yeah, that's neat. Resilience is her motto, I guess, her her word. That she oh, likes to geez, I have it on me so I can remember it. Because some days. <laughs> Michaelin, you're nice. My daughter was like, I was like, she showed me her tattoo. And I was like, What? <laughs> well well it was it was when she was about she was over 18 and she didn't ask she just showed it to me and I was like because at that point what do you do you're just like awesome that's what my 25 year old said right <laughs> surprise. Yeah, I was a little surprised this one. Yeah. well thank you for sharing your chat with us today um, it's a fascinating chart. It's one of the most fascinating I think we've done. We've had a lot of fun working with it. Too, so I, hope, I hope it's been positive. Cool. Um, and um, look, we're, you know, we're, we're always here. So maybe we come back, we look at this in a year. Um, and we run the same yeah. script again and see where you're at and what oh, happens and where, how far you've come. <laughs> Uh, and and I'd, I'd like to hold you to that as long as we're still doing that. Come back in a year and we'll talk. See where you're at. I would love that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you you're working hard. You've got a you've got a deadline up ahead. So let's see what you can do in that year. Um, mm -hmm. where it takes you. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well. Okay.
Thanks, everybody. All Wonderful right. group today. Really, really positive. Uh, man, we did a lot. Um, so thank you all for being here. It's always a, a real pleasure working with you thank all. Thank you, Damien. And I'm looking Thanks, forward to Damien. the next Thank one. you, everybody. All right, bye. bye. Nice bye. meeting everybody. Thanks, See you, everybody. Guys. Bye. See bye. You I wish my mom was uh, into astrology. <laughs> <laughs>